we talk about crisis, I think education in America may be in a crisis. What about education in the United States? Is that going in the right direction? No. Uh, it's, that's a very tough problem. The College Board also found that in the graduating class of 2012, test scores fell in two of the three sections. Reading dropped to the lowest level in four decades. The children who are in our schools today will be the first generation of children who are less educated than their parents. Freedom is like the secret ingredient that makes America special. Freedom is what America is about. Freedom has enabled the greatest minds to dare to know, and it has enabled America to become a country of innovation. Freedom has allowed us to explore into the unknown. It has allowed us to become the strongest nation in the world. But what is the driving force behind freedom? Education. Without education, great men would not dare to speak up. Without education, our forefathers wouldn't be able to establish a free nation. That is why I believe education is the most important element in our nation. They say we live in an increasing global society. So I wanted to know how American students ranked on a global scale. So if you look at sort of where we were several decades ago versus where we are now in the globe, we are now 21st, 23rd, and 26th out of 30 developed nations in uh, science, reading, and math. So there is no doubt that we are in the midst of a crisis. Just to make sure, I decided to get a second opinion with Mr. Cashton Smith, headmaster of Bethany School. We're number two in the amount spent for pu per pupil in the world, we're number two in the amount of money we spend, and yet we're falling behind further and further and further when it comes to our international rankings in education. For every hundred ninth graders, 70, only 70, I should say, will graduate from high school. 44 will go on to college. Only 30 students will enroll in the second year of college and only 21 will graduate from a four-year institution uh, in a six-year period of time. That is simply not good enough to keep the United States competitive in our global economy. In order to get an outside opinion about what's going on in America, I traveled to Gerlingen, Germany, where I met up with Mr. Sin. Apart from giving me a cool tour of his butchery, Mr. Sin told me how things were done in Germany when compared with America. There are many specialists in America, but our apprenticeship system in Germany is very dynamic. Our workers are used in many areas of the work. My American friend was surprised to see the same staff sweeping and serving and so forth. And all the necessary things are learned in the three-year apprenticeship. This apprenticeship system serves as a worldwide example and should definitely be maintained here. Apprenticeships? Not good enough? I needed some sort of explanation. That's why I spoke to Dr. Orsino, headmaster of Westminster Academy. One of the challenges that education educators face today is the changing of the family. Because there was a time in which the mother, the father, the children, it would be a home in which they'd be growing up with both parents. So now when students go to school and they only have one parent or there's issues in the home, they're bringing some of those concerns and challenges into the classroom. I think what schools should do is help children love to learn, love to read, become thinkers, become learners, become problem solvers become those who can cope with difficult situations. I then visited Northeast High School, where I met Vice Principal Mr. Thompson, who told me his thoughts on this issue. I think we're pushing every child now into a college prep, when most kids may not want to go to college. Right. They may not qualify for college. So when they get to the high school part in the 100% college prep, 
and then they fail, we call them a failure. Or technically, we fail them. By eighth grade, ninth grade year, we kind of know that, you know what, maybe your interests aren't with college. Maybe your interests are with vocational track. Because at age 18, with a vocational degree, you could be earning a living. There are kids right now that wake up after graduation with a diploma in their hand and have no skills. So think of a ninth grade child at age 14 that enters into an air conditioning class or a welding class. In four years at age 18, they could be getting a job repairing who knows what and making more money than I'm making. Right. Instead of getting a debt by going back to college or ITT or vocational school. We need more vocational schools to kind of meet all the needs of the children, not just those who are going to college. I met up with Mr. Matthews, a dedicated AP teacher, to talk about standardized tests. Oh yes, I think AP as a program is a wonderful program. And, and then what are the things that are untestable that are actually happening that are very positive in a classroom? You know, you know. You can't really test. How do you right? test, yeah, how do you test mat maturity? How do you test responsibility? How do you test discipline? How it becomes an immense amount of pressure on the teacher to have a certain test scores for their class and therefore my success or failure as a teacher is going to be based on those test scores or my success and failure as a school is going to be based on those test scores. Well, what happens when you have a tremendous amount of failure across the board? Well, then, okay, then you change the test scores, you test standards rather. Now everybody is handcuffed to a system that requires them to teach to a test. So teachers have dumbed down the curriculum. It's like the standardized tests have even been dumbed down so that our students can pass them and do well on them. And we try to load them up with facts for standardized testing, and our nation continues to slip because our students have lost the ability to do critical thinking and to fall in love with learning. And Thomas Jefferson once said that if a man expects to have liberty without education, he will expect what has never been and never will be. America is free because it is a nation of intellect. We cannot let another class graduate unprepared for the tasks that lie ahead. If we let another year go without doing anything to improve the education sector, we will let defeat prevail in our nation. That is why on this year of 2013, I urge you, Mr. President, to please reform the education sector, to encourage American children to strive academically, to challenge us to rise above so that we can lead America as our forefathers did.